Today's episode is going to be on season one, episode five of BT Presents The Encore. Could somebody please make it make sense? Hey everybody, welcome to A Pop of Culture. I am your host, The Esoteric and Facetious, and this is A Pop of Culture, where I speak on pop culture, social justice, and the human experience from a black, bisexual, and millennial perspective. Everything, and I mean everything, I say should be taken with a grain of salt, as I'm simply a recent college grad with access to a recording device and the internet. With that being said, my youth shouldn't be your sole reason to critique my views unless it's truly relevant. If you disagree with anything I say, let's have a civil conversation in the comment section below. Lastly, before we get into the video, I want to shout out my cover channel. I have a cover channel, A Pop of Culture Sings, where I sing throwback R&B, contemporary R&B, pop music, whatever I'm feeling. So if you want to be down like Brandy, if you are down with the click, RP Aliyah, then definitely feel free to check that channel out. So I rewatched the episode and I took notes on all the things that stuck out to me. So we're just going to go with the notes. Okay. So the first thing I have to say is while I am a fan of Keeley, this anti opry energy, I am getting tired of. And maybe she's seeing some stuff that we're not seeing because she's on the set and you know she's with Opry way longer than we are. But in my opinion, Opry is not perfect, but Opry is showing up. She's putting a genuine amount of effort forth towards the group. And I feel like Keely, even though I think Keely early on was keeping it 100 and she did clock some of Opry's behavior, especially with her trying to divide the group, I feel like now Opry is contributing. Opry is somebody who clearly cares about the group and wants the group to do well. So I'm like, Keely, your hate boner for Opry needs to go. Like, I don't know what it is. Maybe y'all need to make out. Like, there's so much tension. I'm like, something needs to happen. There needs to be a release with all this tension. And I feel like Aubrey even tried to make peace with Keely. And Keely just keeps talking mess. And I'm like, Keely, she is trying. She's at least putting effort forth. You know what I mean? And I feel like Keely just don't want to give her any credit. And like I said, maybe there's stuff that she is seeing that we haven't seen, but I'm just like, Keely, I love you down, sis, but please, Aubrey is willing to be the bigger person. You please be the bigger person. Because literally, anytime she opens her mouth, it's to critique Aubrey. And I'm like, you would think that they, that, you know, Aubrey stole her husband the way that she talks about her. I'm like, wow, this is crazy to me. So next, we are going to talk about Elijah and the drama with him. So one thing I noticed upon rewatch was that Elijah says something along the lines of, we've had this conversation before him and the twins when he's talking to Aubrey, of, who, of you know, the fact that I have way more success than them. And this kind of struck me the wrong way because I'm like, what do you mean you've had this conversation? Like, who sits there and talks with their friends about who has the most success or who's about them being the least successful? Now, here's my thing. There, I could see if they were talking about him, talking to him, and maybe they were, you know, unsure of where their next move was going to be. Maybe they were like, hey, you know, you're a little bit more seasoned in the music industry than we are, and we're trying to get some work, or, you know, hey, we have some talent, but we're not really sure how to make these connections. Like, maybe if they were talking to him in confidence, where you are having one of those com conversations with one of your friends where you're like, hey, you are where I want to be, or you're doing some stuff that I want to do, and, you know, I have the talent, but I'm not all the way there. I'm cool with that. But with him saying, we've already had this conversation, like, that came off to me very much, like, attitude, like, big head of, like, we've had this conversation about how I've had the most success. It just felt very much like his ego. Like, he was just, you know, too much. Now let's talk about Aubrey. So Aubrey was saying how she wanted there to be a song by Cosign that was completely separate from the girls, from the twins and their work. And I completely agree with this. This is one of the, like... Aubrey was really gaining a lot of my respect in this episode because I think that's so true. No matter what the twins say, they want the songs to sound a certain way because they wrote them. But if there's a song that they're not as attached to, yes, the producer and the songwriter in them is going to jump out and say, hey, I think it should sound like this. Hey, I should think it should sound like this. But it's not their baby. I tweeted something along the lines of, if they're going to be so critical of how these people perform the song, they maybe shouldn't have brought these songs because they're treating these songs like they're babies. And my thing is, if you're going to produce a song, some songs, you may just need to sing that at home, you know, or make it release it personally. 
and you do your background vocals and you do everything you do lead background harmonies and all that type of stuff because only you're going to get it right and it's a waste of time to try to force these girls to do what only is going to be perfect if you in your head do it because if cosine makes the track then it's something that is all of theirs to really explore and delve into but if it's talking or bird's eye view or skeletons the twins will always have the upper hand and i think as a group there need to be songs where the twins are literally just vocalists on there and they are just singing like other members of the group because otherwise if they always have the upper hand and they always have that control they can always just say well you know I'm going to scrap the rap record. No more. We're not doing it anymore. And I don't think that them having that much authority with them literally already having three songs on the record is fair to other group members. Do they make good music? Yes. Are they good producers and songwriters? Yes. But at the same time, there needs to be some level of equal in the group where just because you're producing doesn't mean that the other people have no voice. And I think that's all Aubrey wants. Aubrey wants a chance to just have her and the other women as vocalists show up on a record. Not, you're a vocalist, but you're also a producer, so you're also dictating how things need to be. We're just women who like to sing, and we're all going to show up on this record as the vocalists we are. One argument that is annoying to me, though, is people keep saying, oh, they want it to be a Cherish record. And here's my thing. Cherish has not been releasing music in years, and I think it's kind of annoying to kind of always try to associate them. Yes, they are Cherish, they're half of Cherish, but at the same time, I feel like a skilled producer or songwriter should be able to make music that's not just their quote-unquote sound. Like, I feel like first and foremost, like, since they're Cherish songs that we all know from back in the day, I feel like as artists, people evolve. So this idea of, oh, they just want to be a Cherish record, oh, they just want to be a Cherish record. I feel like talented producers and songwriters do typically have some type of a sound or brand that you associate with them, but they still can make stuff that is for other people. Like, for example, um, Dark Child. A lot of people associate Dark Child with R&B music, but he was also a producer on Britney Spears' album, Oops, I Did It Again. A talented songwriter or producer can work with a variety of artists throughout genres. So I think it's a dumb argument to say, oh, they just want it to be a Cherish record. These women likely have range where they could make songs for a variety of people. Even if you look at the song that one of them wrote with Pam, that's a gospel song. So it's like clearly they can bring different elements of sound. So I feel like that read, I'm like, that's a tired read that they keep throwing out. And I think maybe them saying oh, the twins want their sound, I get that, but not, oh, they want a Cherish record, because I'm like, not everything that they make is Cherish. Okay, back to Elijah. Elijah said something about, okay, we need to stop the he said, she said, and take accountability. And here's my thing with this whole situation. I feel like he did, and I tweeted this, I do feel like he was sli sliding in some reads about the girls when he was saying, oh, they have the least amount of success and things like that. And I feel like here's the hard part. There's nothing wrong with being confident in yourself and what you do. There's nothing wrong with that. But I didn't necessarily care for the fact that he had to diminish the girls to prove his success. I feel like he should say something like, well, I've been in the game too. I've, you know, been around the block too. We're all seasoned producers and songwriters. Because I feel like when you have to attack somebody else, even if it's in defense of yourself, it can just come off like you're insecure. You don't feel all the way where you need to be. I do think Opie was kind of stirring the pot when she did speak to him about their actions in the studio. That's kind of the hard part of it because I do think Aubrey had good intentions of, I want to speak about how these twins are not really letting everybody contribute to the project and they're kind of taking over. But I do think that in her trying to show Elijah how they were taking over and stuff, that things were miscommunicated. I think Aubrey just wanted to advocate for herself and the other women in the group who clearly agree with her, like Shamari, Nivea, Lamisha, Irish. But I think that he got, Elijah got so caught up in, in trying to prove himself and prove, oh, the girls think they're better than me. Well, let me show you how it really is. That that's where things got sidetracked. I didn't necessarily care for Elijah's reaction to um, Aubrey. Even though I did feel like Aubrey on some levels was being kind of passive aggressive because she was trying, because like I said, I think Aubrey had good intentions, but I do think it was kind of messy. I wish she had just 
brought the, the producers and the twins together and had that conversation like that because a lot of the dynamic of them talking and him talking to them and all of this, I think some of the message was lost. But I didn't like how Elijah was saying the whole, oh, well, I'm not going to fight with a woman because that kind of reminded me of his, oh, I'm not going to have a dick measuring competition with, you know, women and stuff like that because it's kind of like, I feel like some of the things he says kind of make it seem like he may not necessarily view women as equals. Like, oh, I'm not going to fight with a woman. And I think there's a difference between saying, like, hey, I respect you as a woman and I'm not going to, like, get as angry as I would, like, with you as I would with a man. I want to make sure, you know, I'm not. Like, because obviously, like, as a man, not saying women are weak or can't, like, handle arguments. Like, they can. Women are strong. Women are empowered. But, like, I think sometimes as a man, like, I think if you're talking to another man and stuff, you can kind of, like... That's one thing, but I think if you're talking to a woman, like, you never know what people have been through. I don't think you should talk harshly to anybody, but, like, especially with a woman, like, a lot of women, like, I've heard about how some women, like, will literally get off an elevator if they feel uncomfortable with a man. Like, you don't know what experiences a woman has gone through, so I think not taking it past a certain level with a woman is something that men can and should do, but I do think, like... That's an internal thing. Like, for example, I think he should have maybe made a mental note of, hey, it's getting kind of heated with me and Aubrey. I'm going to make sure my, my anger doesn't get past a certain level. My voice doesn't get to a certain tone. But I think him saying, oh, I'm not going to fight with a woman, that kind of makes it like, oh, like, women are beneath me. Women are below me. You know, like, a woman going to sit here and talk to me like that? Who does she think she is? That's what I didn't care for, and that's where I kind of did get annoyed with the situation. One thing that did annoy me is obviously the people in the studio – who are sitting outside the studio aren't necessarily recording, but some of the conflict that takes place in the studio does annoy me because it's like, they were obviously working on something. So I like when they take somebody who's having a conflict in the studio and say, hey, can we go upstairs and talk about this? Because I feel like that's more professional because you're not interrupting the project at hand. Now, I am not sure all the way what was going on at that point, but it seemed like something was being done, you know? Back to Aubrey, one thing that Aubrey did that annoyed me is she was like, he's here to, you know, unify us women and stuff like that. And I feel like Aubrey only brings up the unifying women thing when it suits her narrative. I feel like she does care about the women coming together and making a beautiful music, but I do think, she, like, she tried to use that. I, that's the thing I didn't like about it. Like, Aubrey, I do think that Elijah, some of the stuff he said was out of pocket, and I didn't like the whole... Like I said, the, oh, I'm not going to fight with the women thing. But at the same time, I did feel like she was kind of using, like, the whole white woman privilege and white woman tears. And because that's the thing, like, going back to Emmett Till and a lot of other situations, a white woman's word against a black man can turn out very bad for the black man. So I feel like, Aubrey, if you're going to interact with black men, you have to understand, hey, if I, like, obviously, I do think he was kind of being argumentative with her. But I feel like... He, he was being argumentative with her because he felt like she was kind of stirring the pot. And so my thing is, I feel like you need, like, I don't like when women do that thing of, like, here's my thing, like, I don't like when women will say, will, like, rile you up. Like, I think they obviously, like, it was a heat, heated conversation. And then she was trying to say, like, like, my thing is, there's one thing if a man just is extremely angry and raises his voice with you. But if y'all collectively are kind of having a conflict and he gets upset, you can't just kind of pull the card of like, oh my gosh, like I've never had a, woman, a man talk like that to me. When you kind of contributed to the argument and you contributed to the dissent. Now I will say, I do think Aubrey, she did yell at Keely, but some of the times Aubrey will speak calmly with somebody and it'll get heated and then they'll raise their voice at her. So I'm not saying, I'm not trying to invalidate Aubrey's um, comments, but I do feel like this whole idea of, I feel like she was trying to play the white woman victim card of, oh my gosh, you know, this man, he just, you know, he, I've never been spoken like that to a man in my life, where I feel like she was wanting to use that and also the woman um, empowerment stuff to try to make him out to be a bad person. And I feel like my thing is, I don't think that whether he was a man or a woman, there was a disagreement, and I think it's allowed, it's okay for people's emotions to get heated, and I think that People, like, I think Elijah should evaluate how he's speaking to people, and he, he can improve on that, but I also think Aubrey needs to realize optics, and if I'm a woman on the show, a white woman, I need to realize that some of these things that I'm saying, like, if if this was in the middle of a of a, a mall in, in a certain area, and she was saying this stuff of, you know, of I'm a woman, and how dare you speak to me like that, that could turn out very badly for someone like Elijah, so I think she just needs to realize, hey... I'm a white woman, like, 
when I get upset, I need to be aware of, I can, I can air my grievances, but I need to realize I'm a white woman. The world perceives me a certain way. The world perceives a black man like Elijah a certain way. And I need to understand the weight of my words because things like that can get ugly. The twins annoy me yet again with their whole, do the record then. Because Cosine was trying to make peace with them. He was just trying to, you know, calm the situation down. And for them to just say, you do the record then and walk out. I just feel like for me, I'm not a fan of empty threats. Like, here's my thing. If you're going to fire someone, fire them. If you're going to punish them, punish them. But don't do this in the middle of, oh, if I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Because I feel like your word is everything. So I feel like just this whole, oh, I'm a, oh, scrap the record, scrap the records, and okay, let's work on them again. No. If you're going to scrap the record, scrap the record so we can actually do it. But it's like, it's a power move because they know that they're not going to scrap the record. So they're just saying that so they can have their little fit. One thing I will say is true is Aubrey had got time to have her fit. And Lamisha had time to have her fit where she didn't work. So I, But I feel like they could have just said, hey, we need a break. We're feeling really pressed rather than them attacking people. Because I feel like that's my thing where I think they're, they're are being very unprofessional. And I don't know everything that happened because they talk a lot about the edit, but, like, Cosine, from what I saw, Cosine was literally just trying to calm the situation down. Now, now, Elijah, he seemed like he did, whether intentionally or unintentionally, throw some shade their way. But Cosine just seemed like he was trying to calm the situation down. So I feel like them coming at him that way, I didn't really like that. One thing I noticed that I really liked was Shamari actually got up to speak to like defend Aubrey because that's the thing and now I will say I do think this was karma because Aubrey remember when Pam did that thing where Pam said that homophobic thing and then Keely asked Aubrey to defend her and then Aubrey kind of acted like she didn't know anything she couldn't remember so I do think this was kind of karma with nobody coming to defend her but I will say I did see Shamari get up, and I actually was really happy to see this in the rewatch, because I did kind of feel like Shamari has been living in the confessionals, and I get her not wanting to have drama, but at the same time, I'm like, Shamari, if you want change, you know, like, um, like Michael Jackson says, start with the man in the mirror, start with the person in the mirror, and I feel like you're letting Aubrey, like, that's my thing. The reason why Keely keeps saying that Aubrey is manipulating these women is because these women are letting Aubrey speak for them. They're letting Aubrey and Lamisha speak for them. But the reality is, if Shamari said, no, it's not just Aubrey, I feel this way. And I, I feel like she was struggling to get worried in edgewise, which is why she just kind of sat down. But I just, I, I really give Shamari props for getting up and being trying to speak, oh, speak to show that Aubrey isn't alone. Because that's why Keely keeps running with this narrative of Aubrey's being divisive. Because she's not seeing that these other women feel the same way, that they're just letting Aubrey and Lamisha be their mouthpiece so they don't have to deal with the drama. One thing I really liked that Irish said, I'm really enjoying Irish's confessionals. She said something about, we learned to adjust to them, but they haven't learned to adjust to us. And I think that's so true. When there's somebody who has a temper, we can learn how to tiptoe around them so that they don't get offended. But I feel like the twins, and I will say some of this isn't shown, so maybe we're not seeing the whole picture. But I do think with the twins, it, sometimes it seems like, you know, like when... The biggest example of this was with talking. Sometimes it seems like they are just so ready to say, scrap the records. And it's like, all the women worked hard on talking. And sometimes you do have to scrap the record. But for you to not even let them have a voice about it just because you don't like it, that's problematic. You need to consider other people's opinions. And even if Irish and Lamisha aren't all the way there, they're there to work and they're there to contribute. And they've shown that they can give you a solid vocal with practice and with your direction. So I do feel like they need to adjust the other women in realizing, hey, we're a part of this group. We are vocalists in this group, too. We're not just the producers. I, and I don't know how they can do that. Like, I thought with the bird's eye view moment where they all talked about their experiences in the industry, that would have been enough. But just seeing them go head to head with people like Cosign and stuff and, like, the way the choreographer reacted to them, it just, I don't know. Like, I like them, but there's just some behaviors that they're doing that just feel like, all right, now this is kind of becoming a lot to deal with, you know? And I feel like they just need to, I don't know how much time they have left, but I just would love if for one day, like, with the, and that's why I feel like Aubrey and getting a song from Cosign would be great, because they could just become vocalists again. Like in the beginning when they were just doing that I'm giving away song. But one thing that they did share was that Cosign and 
Elijah came like one day a week or something like that. They didn't come every single day. So one of the things that's frustrating to me is people are saying stuff like, oh, well, they brought y'all onto the show to be um, singers, not producers. But I do feel like with them giving them so little time with the actual producers that were hired on, the in-house producers, I feel like that does make it where people have to step up. Because if the producers aren't coming in every day, the songs have to get done somehow. So I feel like people are mad at them taking over. But how else is stuff going to get done if the producers aren't there on a regular basis? Now Aubrey disappears. Her bed is gone. No one knows where she is. And she leaves a note talking about how much Elijah disrespected her. And this is where it really did start to annoy me. Because I'm like, yes, Elijah was being disrespectful but it was a heated situation not justifying how he treated her and i'm not invalidating her feelings but i also do feel like like i said there's a balance between hey i didn't like how he spoke to me and but in like leaving a note and like abandoning the set which obviously i don't think she abandoned the set i think like this was obviously something that was being done for drama but it's just like i don't know i just there's something about i feel like aubrey may need to look into optics and just realizing like I'm just acting like, like her and Elijah had a heated conversation yes and I'm not doubting her feelings but people have heated conversations all the time and I feel like she was and I didn't see all of it but I feel like she was just trying to make it out like he's this abuser and I feel like like leaving the note that just made it where I just feel like that took it a little too far where I'm like you had a heated conversation yes but like you acting like he's an abuser and I don't know what she's been through but I just felt like she was just egging it on a little too much and that made me feel like Opry Miss Ma'am you're doing a lot right now you are doing a lot sidebar one thing I noticed was that the twins when they're not wearing makeup they'll wear sunglasses and that reminded me of the whole Monique Bonnet thing I made a video about that feel free to check it out but I think it's even though they have like really clear skin it just was very interesting to me because I'm just like it reminded me of the bonnet thing because you know obviously Monique wants people to you know present themselves in their best light you know not show up looking halfway this halfway that so that was just something I noted now we have Opry making peace with the twins and Keely and I thought this was a nice moment and I'm really rooting for Opry I'm upset that you know they're saying her stuff is gone she did drop a single, which I'm definitely going to have to check out. But I'm just like, I'm hoping she makes it to the end because I feel like she's one of the few people actually speaking since. So I'm like, Aubrey, please do not leave. But Aubrey made peace with the twins, which some of the times where they're making peace, I'm like, y'all literally started, like, they started yelling at you at the end of the episode. So it's just like, okay, we'll play like y'all made peace. I feel like Keely, Keely does something in her bones makes her hate Aubrey. And I don't know what it is. So... I feel like the twins and her actually kind of made a little bit of peace, but I feel like Keely, Keely played along, but y'all know that Keely, I feel like Keely just is in her bones, is in her blood, her hatred for Opry. One thing I liked next was when Cosine comes back, he's still like a team player, he's still being friendly, and of course, the twins said that the episodes are being edited out of order, so some of the stuff from later on is being put, like it's not a, a chronological order thing, but I like that, of course he was there to get paid but I like that he came in friendly with them even though the last time we'd seen him they had an altercation and he seems to be more balanced than Elijah when it comes to conflict where he's just like I'm here to do the work like let's chill let's enjoy each other's company you know things like that one of the twins the one who wrote talking said oh I don't like where it is you know it's not where I want it to be and I get that like as an artist, as a creative, you know, your projects, your work may not always be, like, you know, you're always going to want it to be the best of the best. You're going to want it to be perfect. So I feel like I get that where she may not feel like, okay, it's not where I need to be. I still need to, you know, tweak some things. But here's my issue. I feel like she's not using the time. And maybe, like I said, it's the edits and stuff like that. But I'm like, if talking isn't where it needs to be, if there's vocalists that you need to work with to get it where you need to be, do that. But I feel like with her, she was just so quick to throw it out and say, well, F talk, and like, it's not where I want it to be. Eventually, her and the sister talk, and she's like, well, I do want it to, well, let's do it together, and then I'll be able to fix it. So I'm glad they did that, but I just wasn't feeling how quick she was willing to throw it out, because it's like, other people worked hard on that song. It's not just about you anymore. Now, once you, that's my thing. When you give up a song, you also give up some of that personal stuff for the for the sake of the group 
you may have wanted it to be this, 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 and this. But you may have to make some sacrifices because now it's the group song. It's the song you wrote, but it's the group song now. It's a collective ownership of it, and you have to accept that. Opry Loki is becoming my favorite character. I love when they were in the studio and Nivy was kind of unsure about the vocals that she had laid down. And Opry was kind of like, oh, well, you know, it seems like, you know, you're just being very critical of yourself. Like, if you don't immediately get praised, you think it's not good, even if it is good. And I love that. Like, that's what I watch the show for. I love singing and I love when singers interact with each other, help each other get better, you know, talk through things. This was a moment that I thought was really good. And it showed Aubrey is not just all out for herself. She cares about the other women. And she wants to kind of bond with them and create this music and create this project. So I love that. And I thought she also was very right when she talked about how there wasn't a fast, up-tempo song, like a banger. And I think that the word banger kind of, I think there was a lot of a miscommunication with stuff going on because the twins took it as, oh, she doesn't think our stuff is good. But she was just saying there's not like an upbeat, get down and dance song. And I feel like it was an innocent point and the other girls agree with her. But yet again, the twins take it the wrong way. One of them goes and tells the other one. And I just felt like this was one of the most unnecessary conflicts in the episode because I'm just like, they're not saying your stuff is bad. They like your stuff. They just want something that's more upbeat. And this was literally just a waste of time. Another thing happened. They were debating the order of the song. This is when the whole talking conversation happened. And the twins go at it. And one thing I will say I do agree with, even though I shook seeing them go at it, because they're so usually like on the same page. So I like that it was showing that they, even themselves, will have disagreements because that's how passionate they're about their work. But at the same time, I think we all have to be adults and realize a decision needs to be made. Things need to get done. That may mean Skeletons isn't the first song. If it's a good song, it's going to be a good song no matter what. It may mean Talking's not the first song or Talking is the first song. You have to, like that's my thing. I think that they get the business side of things and they get getting things done. But I think that the whole sacrifice thing is what they're not getting. And I think they're sacrificing their time and energy. But I think that like, you have to realize, like, that's my thing. The twins seem to want to give 100 all the time. And they get upset when other people aren't giving 100. And my thing is, yes, you give what you want to give. But at the same time, I think that they need to learn, okay, sometimes, like, we can still give our best, but we need to meet the other women where they're at. So if the other women are wanting to do X, Y, Z, like, there has to be a way for the twins to get the, their music the way they want it while also including the other women. There has to be a way to compromise. And I think that that's the twins. It's hard because they like the work they're putting in is valuable, but it's like how do we balance what they want and like what the team wants? You know what I mean? That's the hard thing. One of the things I love to hear was Aubrey saying that she was not manipulating the other women. One of the things that I said earlier that I think is so true is people like Kaylee think that Aubrey's manipulating them just because they agree with what Aubrey has to say. But that's not it. They just are agreeing with her, but they're just letting her be the mouthpiece so that they don't have to deal with the drama. And I feel like part of that is because sometimes I feel like you being in drama can lead to you getting less opportunities. For instance, with Aubrey, I feel like once she started speaking up against the twins and having conflict with the twins, suddenly now we want to give Shamari your part or give Shamari most of your part in her skeletons. And yes, Aubrey wasn't there when they were filming, and yes, she did take that break. But at the same time, I do feel like if Aubrey had been singing their praises, she would have stayed in the song. Just like when Pam said that she loved their song, she got added to it so quickly. You know what I mean? This episode was very frustrating to me because there was so little music, there was so much arguing, and I do wonder how much of the arguing is genuine and if some of it is the producers kind of you know pulling strings because my thing is for me I know that some people want to watch for the drama and stuff but me myself and I and I feel like also other people on Twitter I live tweet the show and I see a lot of other people I feel like a lot of us we want to hear the music a lot of us are R&B fans who are watching the show because we like the music that these women made when they were working in the industry so I feel like they're so pressed on the drama, we're not even getting the music. And I feel like if they just gave us some of the sessions, even if it was the best cuts of the session, like even when we saw Iris singing that part, 
give us more of that, and obviously the show is, everything is done, but I think that they're so focused on the drama, they're not realizing some of us came to see music, some of us came to hear good singing, and that's frustrating, but, you know, I'm hoping they take all the feedback in from the show if they get a season two, and we're not just being given drama fighting, drama fighting, drama fighting, because even with one of the twins, one of the things that they mentioned is one of them was crying in one of the scenes, but they don't talk about why. So it's like you're, I feel like they're picking out certain parts of the show and we're missing out some valuable parts. Probably parts that humanize the twins and parts where other people other than the Opry express their feelings. So it's not just Opry versus Keeley and the twins. But what did y'all think? Did y'all enjoy this episode? What are y'all expecting? I'm so excited to see the listening party tomorrow and see how that goes. Thanks so much for watching. Love y'all. Bye bye. See y'all in the next one. Share your thoughts below. Like this video if you like this video. If you made it to this point in the video, comment a thumbs up emoji below or a still here if you are still here. Subscribe if you want to see more and make sure to hit that bell so you're the first to know when I upload new content. I upload new content every week. And if you're enjoying yourself, and why wouldn't you be enjoying yourself? To the left, there's a playlist of all my videos and podcasts. I have 24 in counting. In the center is a button to subscribe if you just haven't had a chance to subscribe and you would like to. And to the right is a playlist of all of my covers and parodies. So if you are wanting to check those out, feel free to do so. And if you want to support me, if you want to support the show, first and foremost, a non-financial you can support is just through sharing this video. I can make the thumbnails, I can, you know, make the titles, I can do the tags and do keyword research. One of the best ways that I can grow my brand is through y'all sharing this content with other people who like this type of content because... I nor you can control the algorithm, but I can control the quality of the content I make and y'all can, if you enjoy the content, share with people who can like it. So that way, you know, if y'all are feeling it, it's getting put out there, whether, you know, the algorithm favors it or not, somebody's going to see you because you resonated with it and you resonated with me and now you're sharing it with other people. So if that's a non-financial way, you can support the channel. And if you do want to support the channel financially... My cash app is linked in the description of this video. You know, I'm trying to, you know, upgrade my production quality and just, you know, keep growing and growing and expanding and, you know, doing bigger and better. So if you want to help and support that vision, feel free to do so. All those who donate to the channel will be featured in the credits of all of my videos on both of my channels. Thanks so much for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye. See you next time.